The North Pole, also known as the Geographic North Pole or Terrestrial North Pole, is, subject to the caveats explained below, defined as the point in the northern hemisphere where the Earth's axis of rotation meets its surface. It should not be confused with the North Magnetic Pole. The North Pole is the northernmost point on the Earth, lying diametrically opposite the South Pole. It defines geodetic latitude 90 a degree north, as well as the direction of true north. At the North Pole all directions point south. All lines of longitude converge there, so its longitude can be defined as any degree value. While the South Pole lies on a continental land mass, the North Pole is located in the middle of the Arctic Ocean amid waters that are almost permanently covered with constantly shifting sea ice. This makes it impractical to construct a permanent station at the North Pole. However, the Soviet Union, and later Russia, constructed a number of manned drifting stations on a generally annual basis since 1937, some of which have passed over very close to the Pole. Since 2002, the Russians have also annually established a base, Barnio, close to the Pole. This operates for a few weeks during early spring. Studies in the 2000s predicted that the North Pole may become seasonally ice-free due to Arctic ice shrinkage, with time scales varying from 2016 to the late 21st century or later. The sea depth at the North Pole has been measured at 4,261 am by the Russian Mir submersible in 2007 and at 4,087 am by USS Nautilus in 1958. The nearest land is usually said to be Kef Club and Island, off the northern coast of Greenland about 700 km away, though some perhaps non-permanent gravel banks lie slightly closer. The nearest permanently inhabited place is alert in the Kuktayalug region, Nunavut, Canada, which is located 817 km from the pole. Precise definition. The Earth's axis of rotation are Euro, and hence the position of the North Pole in a Euro was commonly believed to be fixed until, in the 18th century. The mathematician Leonhard Euler predicted that the axis might wobble slightly. Around the beginning of the 20th century astronomers noticed a small apparent variation of latitude, as determined for a fixed point on Earth from the observation of stars. Part of this variation could be attributed to a wandering of the pole across the Earth's surface, by a range of a few meters. The wandering has several periodic components and an irregular component. The component with a period of about 435 days is identified with the eight-month wandering predicted by Euler and is now called the Chandler Wobble after its discoverer. The exact point of intersection of the Earth's axis in the Earth's surface, at any given moment, is called the instantaneous pole, but because of the wobble this cannot be used as a definition of a fixed north pole when meter scale precision is required. It is desirable to tie the system of Earth coordinates to fixed landforms. Of course, given plate tectonics and isostasy, there is no system in which all geographic features are fixed. Yet the International Earth Rotation and Reference System Service and the International Astronomical Union have defined a framework called the International Terrestrial Reference System. Exploration Pre-1900 As early as the 16th century, many eminent people correctly believed that the North Pole was in a sea, which in the 19th century was called the Polynia or Open Polar Sea. It was therefore hoped that passage could be found through ice flows at favorable times of the year. Several expeditions set out to find the way, generally with whaling ships, already commonly used in the cold northern latitudes. One of the earliest expeditions to set out with the explicit intention of reaching the North Pole was that of British naval officer William Edward Parry who in 1827 reached latitude 82A degree 45 a euro squared north. In 1871 the Polaris expedition, a U.S. attempt on the pole led by Charles Francis Hall, ended in disaster. Another British Royal Navy attempt on the pole, part of the British Arctic expedition, by Commander Albert H. Markham reached a then record 83A degree 20 26 inches north in May 1876 before turning back. In 1879 a Euro 1881 expedition commanded by U.S. Naval Officer George W. DeLong ended tragically when their ship the USS Jeanette, was crushed by ice. Over half the crew, including DeLong, were lost. 
In April 1895 the Norwegian explorers Fritjof Nornsen and Jalmer Johansson struck out for the pole on skis after leaving Nornsen's icebound ship Fram. The pair reached latitude 86 a degree 14 a euro squared north before they abandoned the attempt and turned southwards, eventually reaching Franz Josef Land. In 1897 Swedish engineer Salomon August Andra copyright Ian and two companions tried to reach the North Pole in the hydrogen balloon RNEN, but came down 300 km north of Kvitia, the northeasternmost part of the Svalbard archipelago. They trekked to Kvitia but died there three months later. In 1930 the remains of this expedition were found by the Norwegian Bratvag expedition. The Italian explorer Luigi Amedio, Duke of the Abruzzi and Captain Umberto Canai of the Italian Royal Navy sailed the converted whaler Stella Pelle from Norway in 1899. On March 11, 1900 Canai led a party over the ice and reached latitude 86 a degree 34 a euro unregistered trademark on April 25 setting a new record by beating Nornsen's result of 1895 by 35 to 40 a km. Kanai barely managed to return to the camp, remaining there until June 23. On August 16 the Stella Pelle left Rudolf Island heading south and the expedition returned to Norway. 1900 a Euro 1940 the U.S. explorer Frederick Cook claimed to have reached the North Pole on April 21, 1908 with two Inuit men, Ohala and Atukishuk, but he was unable to produce convincing proof and his claim is not widely accepted. The conquest of the North Pole was for many years credited to U.S. Navy engineer Robert Peary, who claimed to have reached the Pole on April 6, 1909, accompanied by Matthew Henson and four Inuit men, Uta, Siglo, Aginga, and Uka. However, Peary's claim remains controversial. Those who accompanied Peary on the final stage of the journey were not trained in navigation, and thus could not independently confirm his navigational work, which some claimed to have been particularly sloppy as he approached the pole. The distances and speeds that Peary claimed to have achieved once the last support party turned back seem incredible to many people, almost three times that which he had accomplished up to that point. Peary's account of a journey to the pole and back while traveling along the direct linear euro the only strategy that is consistent with the time constraints that he was for single euro is contradicted by Henson's account of tortuous detours to avoid pressure ridges and open leads. The British explorer Wally Herbert, initially a supporter of Peary, researched Peary's records in 1989 and found that there were significant discrepancies in the explorer's navigational records. He concluded that Peary had not reached the pole. Support for Peary came again in 2005, however, when British explorer Tom Avery and four companions recreated the outward portion of Peary's journey with replica wooden sleds and Canadian Eskimo dog teams, reaching the North Pole in 36 days, 22 hours a year or nearly five hours faster than Peary. However, Avery's fastest five-day march was 90 nautical miles significantly short of the 135 claimed by Peary. Avery writes on his website that the admiration and respect which I hold for Robert Peary, Matthew Henson and the four Inuit men who ventured north in 1909, has grown enormously since we set out from Cape Columbia. Having now seen for myself how he travelled across the pack ice, I am more convinced than ever that Peary did indeed discover the North Pole. Another rejection of Peary's claim arrived in 2009, when Emil Standish of the California Institute of Technology, an experienced referee of scientific claims, reported numerous alleged lacunae and inconsistencies. The first claimed flight over the pole was made on May 9, 1926 by U.S. Naval Officer Richard E. Byrd and pilot Floyd Bennett in a Fokker trimotor aircraft. Although verified at the time by a committee of the National Geographic Society, this claim has since been undermined by the 1996 revelation that Byrd's long-hidden diary's solar sextant data consistently contradict his June 1926 report's parallel data by over 100 ME. The secret report's alleged unroot solar sextant data were inadvertently so impossibly over-precise that he excised all these alleged raw solar observations out of the version of the report finally sent to geographical societies five months later a realization first published in 2000 by the University of Cambridge after scrupulous refereeing. According to Standish, 
Anyone who is acquainted with the facts and has any amount of logical reasoning can not avoid the conclusion that neither Cook, nor Peary, nor Bird reached a North Pole. And they all knew it. According to some, the first consistent, verified, and scientifically convincing attainment of the pole was on May 12, 1926, by Norwegian explorer Roald Amundsen and his U.S. sponsor Lincoln Ellsworth from the airship Norge. Norge, though Norwegian owned, was designed and piloted by the Italian Umberto Nobile. The flight started from Svalbard in Norway, and crossed the Arctic Ocean to Alaska. Nobile, with several scientists and crew from the Norge, overflew the pole a second time on May 24, 1928, in the airship Italia. The Italia crashed on its return from the pole, with the loss of half the crew. In May 1937 the world's first North Pole ice station, North Pole 1, was established by Soviet scientists by air 20 kilometers from the North Pole. The expedition members, oceanographer Pyotr Chirchov, meteorologist Yevany Fyodorov, Radio operator Ernst Krenkel, and the leader Ivan Papanin conducted scientific research at the station for the next nine months. By February 19, 1938, when the group was picked up by the icebreakers Tamey and Merman, their station had drifted 2850 a km to the eastern coast of Greenland. 1940 a Euro 2000, in May 1945 an RAF Lancaster of the Ares expedition became the first Commonwealth aircraft to overfly the North Geographic and North Magnetic Poles. The plane was piloted by David Cecil McKinley of the Royal Air Force. It carried an 11-man crew, with Kenneth C. McClure of the Royal Canadian Air Force in charge of all scientific observations. In 2006, McClure was honored with a spot in Canada's Aviation Hall of Fame. Discounting Peary's disputed claim, the first men to set foot at the North Pole were a Soviet party including geophysicists Mikhail Oskin and Pavel Senko, oceanographers Mikhail Somov and Pavel Gordinko, and other scientists and flight crew of Alex Samkst's of Sever II expedition. It was organized by the chief directorate of the Northern Sea Route. The party flew on three planes from Kotelny Island to the North Pole and landed there at 4.44 p.m. on April 23, 1948. They established a temporary camp and for the next two days conducted scientific observations. On April 26 the expedition flew back to the continent. Next year, on May 9, 1949, two other Soviet scientists became the first people to parachute onto the North Pole. They jumped from a Douglas C-47 Skytrain, registered CCCPH-369. On May 3, 1952, U.S. Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Joseph O. Fletcher and Lieutenant William Pershing Benedict, along with scientist Albert P. Crary, landed a modified Douglas C-47 Skytrain at the North Pole. Some Western sources considered this to be the first landing at the Pole until the Soviet landings became widely known. The United States Navy submarine USS Nautilus crossed the North Pole on August 3, 1958. On March 17, 1959 USS Skate surfaced at the Pole, breaking through the ice above it, becoming the first naval vessel to do so. Setting aside Peary's claim, the first confirmed surface conquest of the North Pole was that of Ralph Plasted, Walt Pedersen, Jerry Pizzle and Jean-Luc Bombardier who traveled over the ice by snowmobile and arrived on April 19, 1968. The United States Air Force independently confirmed their position. On April 6, 1969, Wally Herbert and companions Alan Gill, Roy Corner and Kenneth Hedges of the British Transarctic Expedition became the first men to reach the North Pole on foot. They continued on to complete the first surface crossing of the Arctic Ocean a Euro, and by its longest axis, Barrow, Alaska to Svalbard a Euro a feat that has never been repeated. Because of suggestions of placed its use of air transport, some sources classify Herbert's expedition as the first confirmed to reach the North Pole over the ice surface by any means. In the 1980s, placed its pilots Weldy Phipps and Ken Lee signed affidavits asserting that no such airlift was provided. It is also said that Herbert was the first person to reach the Pole of Inaccessibility. On August 17, 1977, the Soviet nuclear-powered icebreaker Arktika completed the first surface vessel journey to the North Pole. 
In 1982 Ron Alpins and Charles Burton became the first people to cross the Arctic Ocean in a single season. They departed from Cape Crozier, Ellesmere Island, on February 17, 1982 and arrived at the geographic North Pole on April 10, 1982. They traveled on foot and snowmobile. From the Pole, they traveled towards Svalbard but, due to the unstable nature of the ice, ended their crossing at the ice edge after drifting south on an ice floe for 99 days. They were eventually able to walk to their expedition ship MV Benjamin Bowring and boarded it on August 4, 1982 at position 8031 NO059W. As a result of this journey, which formed a section of the three-year Transglobe Expedition 1979 a Euro 1982, Fins and Burton became the first people to complete a circumnavigation of the world via both North and South Poles, by surface travel alone. This achievement remains unchallenged to this day. In 1985, Sir Edmund Hillary and Neil Armstrong landed at the North Pole in a small twin-engine ski plane. Hillary thus became the first man to stand at both poles and on the summit of Everest. In 1986, Will Steger, with seven teammates, became the first to be confirmed as reaching the pole by dog sled and without resupply. On May 6, 1986, USS Archer USS Ray and USS Hoke Bill surfaced at the North Pole, the first tri-submarine surfacing at the North Pole. On April 21, 1987, Shinji Kazama of Japan became the first person to reach the North Pole on a motorcycle. On May 18, 1987, USS Bill Fish, USS Sea Devil and HMS Superb surfaced at the North Pole, the first international surfacing at the North Pole. In 1988, a 13-man strong team skied across the Arctic from Siberia to northern Canada. One of the Canadians, Richard Weber became the first person to reach the pole from both sides of the Arctic Ocean. On May 4, 1990, Barr G. Eland and Erling Kag became the first explorers ever to reach the North Pole unsupported, after a 58-day ski trek from Ellesmere Island in Canada, a distance of 800 km. On September 7, 1991, the German research vessel Polesten and the Swedish icebreaker Odden reached the North Pole as the first conventional powered vessels. Both scientific parties and crew took oceanographic and geological samples and had a common tug of war and a football game on an ice floe. Polesten again reached a pole exactly ten years later with the Healy. 21st century. In recent years, journeys to the North Pole by air or by icebreaker have become relatively routine and are even available to small groups of tourists through adventure holiday companies. Parachute jumps have frequently been made onto the North Pole in recent years. The temporary seasonal Russian camp of Barnio has been established by air a short distance from the pole annually since 2002, and caters for scientific researchers as well as tourist parties. Trips from the camp to the pole itself may be arranged overland or by helicopter. The first attempt at underwater exploration of the North Pole was made on April 22, 1998 by Russian firefighter and diver Andrei Rizhkov with the support of the Diving Club of Moscow State University, but ended in fatality. The next attempted dive at the North Pole was organized the next year by the same diving club, and ended in success on April 24, 1999. The divers were Michael Wolf, Brett Cormick, and Bob Boss. In 2005, the United States Navy submarine USS Charlotte surfaced through 155 cm of ice at the North Pole and spent 18 hours there. In July 2007, British endurance swimmer Lewis Gordon Pugh completed a 1 km swim at the North Pole. His feat, undertaken to highlight the effects of global warming, took place in clear water that had opened up between the ice flows. His later attempt to paddle a kayak to the North Pole in late 2008 following the erroneous prediction of clear water to the pole, was stymied when his expedition found itself stuck in thick ice after only three days. The expedition was then abandoned. By September 2007 the North Pole had been visited 66 times by different surface ships, 54 times by Soviet and Russian icebreakers, 4 times by Swedish Odin, 3 times by German Polar Stern, three times by USCGC Healy and USCGC Polar Sea, and once by CCGS Louis S. Street Laron and by Swedish Bidar Viking. 
2007 descent to the North Pole seabed. On August 2, 2007, a Russian scientific expedition Arctica 2007 made the first ever manned descent to the ocean floor at the North Pole, to a depth of 4.3 km, as part of the research program in support of Russia's 2001 extended continental shelf claim to a large swathe of the Arctic Ocean floor. The descent took place in two mere submersibles and was led by Soviet and Russian polar explorer Arta Chilingarov. In a symbolic act of visitation, the Russian flag was placed on the ocean floor exactly under the pole. The expedition is the latest move to show that Russia has the dominant influence in the Arctic. The warming Arctic climate and summer shrinkage of the iced area attracted the attention of many countries, such as China and the United States, toward the top of the world, where resources and shipping routes may soon be exploitable. MLAE 2009 Expedition In 2009, the Russian Marine Levice Automobile Expedition Euro MLAE 2009 reached the North Pole on two custom-built 6x6 low-pressure tire ATVs A Euro Yemlia 1 and Yemlia 2 A Euro designed by Vesely Alagin, a known Russian mountain climber, explorer, and engineer. The vehicles reached the North Pole on April 26, 2009, 1730. The expedition was supported by the Russian Geographical Society. The Russian Book of Records recognized it as the first successful vehicle trip to the geographical North Pole. MLA 2013 Expedition On March 1, 2013, the Russian Marine Levice Automobile Expedition A Euro MLA 2013 on two custom-built 6x6 low-pressure tire ATVs A Euro Yemlia 3 and Yemlia 4 A Euro started from Golomyni Island to the North Pole across drifting ice of the Arctic Ocean. The vehicles reached a pole on April 6 and then continued to the Canadian coast. The coast was reached on April 30, 2013, and on May 5, 2013, the expedition finished in Resolute Bay, NU. The way between the Russian borderland and the Canadian coast took 55 days. It was 2300 km across drifting ice and about 4000 km in total. The expedition was totally self-dependent and used no external supplies. The expedition was supported by the Russian Geographical Society. Day and night, the sun at the North Pole is continuously above the horizon during the summer and continuously below the horizon during the winter. Sun rises just before the March equinox. The sun then takes three months to reach its highest point of near 23 or one half a degree elevation at the summer solstice after which time it begins to sink, reaching sunset just after the September equinox. When the sun is visible in the polar sky, it appears to move in a horizontal circle above the horizon. This circle gradually rises from near the horizon just after the vernal equinox to its maximum elevation above the horizon at summer solstice and then sinks back toward the horizon before sinking below it at the autumnal equinox. A civil twilight period of about two weeks occurs before sunrise and after sunset, a nautical twilight period of about five weeks occurs before sunrise and after sunset and an astronomical twilight period of about seven weeks occurs before sunrise and after sunset. These effects are caused by a combination of the Earth's axial tilt and its revolution around the Sun. The direction of the Earth's axial tilt, as well as its angle relative to the plane of the Earth's orbit around the Sun, remains very nearly constant over the course of a year. At northern midsummer the North Pole is facing towards the Sun to its maximum extent. As the year progresses and the Earth moves around the Sun, the North Pole gradually turns away from the Sun until at midwinter it is facing away from the Sun to its maximum extent. A similar sequence is observed at the South Pole, with a six-month time difference. Time, in most places on Earth, local time is determined by longitude, such that the time of day is more or less synchronized to the position of the sun in the sky. This line of reasoning fails at the North Pole, where the sun rises and sets only once per year, and all lines of longitude, and hence all time zones, converge. There is no permanent human presence at the North Pole and no particular time zone has been assigned. Polar expeditions may use any time zone that is convenient, such as Greenwich Mean Time, or the time zone of the country from which they departed. Climate The North Pole is substantially warmer than the South Pole because it lies at sea level in the middle of an ocean, 
rather than at altitude in a continental land mass. Winter temperatures at the North Pole can range from about a 43 AA degree Celsius to a 26 AA degree Celsius, perhaps averaging around a 34 AA degree Celsius. Summer temperatures average around the freezing point. The highest temperature yet recorded is 5 AA degree Celsius, much warmer than the South Pole's record high of only a 12.3 AA degree Celsius. The sea ice at the North Pole is typically around 2 to 3 AM thick. Although ice thickness, its spatial extent, and the fraction of open water within the ice pack can vary rapidly and profoundly in response to weather and climate. Studies have shown that the average ice thickness has decreased in recent years. It is likely that global warming has contributed to this, but it is not possible to attribute the recent abrupt decrease in thickness entirely to the observed warming in the Arctic. Reports have also predicted that within a few decades the Arctic Ocean will be entirely free of ice in the summer. This may have significant commercial implications. See Territorial Claims, below. The retreat of the Arctic sea ice will accelerate global warming, as less ice cover reflects less solar radiation, and may have serious climate implications by contributing to Arctic cyclone generation. Flora and fauna Polar bears are believed rarely to travel beyond about 82 a degree north owing to the scarcity of food, though tracks have been seen in the vicinity of the North Pole, and a 2006 expedition reported sighting a polar bear just one ami from the pole. The ringed seal has also been seen at the pole, and Arctic foxes have been observed less than 60 a km away at 89 a degree 40 a euro squared on. Birds seen at or very near the pole include the snow bunting, northern fulmar and black-legged kitawig, though some bird sightings may be distorted by the tendency of birds to follow ships and expeditions. Fish have been seen in the waters at the North Pole, but these are probably few in number. A member of the Russian team that descended to the North Pole seabed in August 2007 reported seeing no sea creatures living there. However, it was later reported that a sea anemone had been scooped up from the seabed mud by the Russian team and that video footage from the dive showed unidentified shrimps and amphipods. Territorial claims to the North Pole and Arctic regions Under international law, no country owns the North Pole or the region of the Arctic Ocean surrounding it. The five surrounding Arctic countries, Russia, Canada, Norway, Denmark, and the United States, are limited to a 200 nautical mile exclusive economic zone around their coasts, and the area beyond that is administered by the International Seabed Authority. Upon ratification of the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, a country has 10 years to make claims to an extended continental shelf beyond its 200 mile exclusive economic zone. If validated, such a claim gives the claimant state rights to what may be on or beneath the sea bottom within the claimed zone. Norway, Russia, Canada and Denmark have all launched projects to base claims that certain areas of Arctic continental shelves should be subject to their sole sovereign exploitation. In 1907 Canada invoked a sector principle to claim sovereignty over a sector stretching from its coasts to the North Pole. Although this claim has not been relinquished, but was not consistently pressed until 2013. Cultural associations, in some Western cultures, the geographic North Pole is described as being the location of the workshop and residence of Santa Claus, although the depictions have been inconsistent between the geographic and magnetic North Pole. Canada Post has assigned postal code HOH0 hour to the North Pole. This association reflects an age-old esoteric mythology of Hyperborea that posits the North Pole, the otherworldly world axis, as the abode of God and superhuman beings. The popular figure of the pole-dwelling Santa Claus thus functions as an archetype of spiritual purity and transcendence. As Henry Corbin has documented, the North Pole plays a key part in the cultural worldview of Sufism and Iranian mysticism. The Orient sought by the mystic, the Orient that cannot be located on our maps, is in the direction of the North, beyond the North. Owing to its remoteness, the pole is sometimes identified with a mysterious mountain of ancient Islamic tradition called Mount Qaf, the farthest point of the earth. According to certain authors, the Jabal Qaf of Muslim cosmology is a version of Rubes Nigra, a mountain whose ascent, like Dante's climbing of the mountain of purgatory, 
represents the pilgrim's progress through spiritual states. In Iranian theosophy, the heavenly pole, the focal point of the spiritual ascent, acts as a magnet to draw beings to its palaces ablaze with immaterial matter. See also Arctic, Arctic Cooperation and Politics, Arctic Council, Biome, Celestial Pole, Drifting Ice Station, Ecliptic Pole, Inuit Circumpolar Council, North Pole, Alaska, Polaris, South Pole, References. Further reading External links, Arctic Council, The Northern Forum, North Pole Travel Guide from Waikiki Voyage, North Pole Webcam, The Short Arctic Summer of 2004, The Puzzling Arctic Summer of 2003, Review of Surface Melting from 2002 to the Present Revealed by the North Pole Webcam, FAQ on the Arctic and the North Pole, Polar Controversies Still Rage Article by Roderick A. May, Daylight, Darkness and Changing of the Seasons at the North Pole. Video of scientists on sea ice at the North Pole as it begins to crack underfoot. Gudazi, Sarah, Meltdown, Ice Cracks at North Pole. September 2006, Live Science, Access January 29, 2007. The North Pole was here, Puzzles and Perils at the Top of the World. Video of the nuclear icebreaker Yamal visiting the North Pole in 2001, Polar Discovery, North Pole Observatory Expedition.